What's up, Kings fans? We are back with yet another installment of our postseason roundtable. Yep, we're weeks later. Still have not changed clothes because we are hardcore like that. Enjoy. It's episode 110. I'm Dennis Bernstein. I'm Charles E. Smith Jr. Gan Matsuda. I'm Matt Wright. Dave Joseph. I'm John Moncrief. I'm John Hovind, a.k.a. The Mayor. Last season, big topic of conversation, Ilya Kovalchuk. Why? Because the Kings needed a top six scoring forward. We still need one, uh, unless Dustin Petter uh, gets it together. So, not a lot of you know, unrestricted free agents available, uh, other than Brad Richards. Um, is Brad Richards someone that the Kings should go after? Will they go after him? Should they? Yes. Will they? Yes. Will they get him? No. No. Because he doesn't want to My, my, my <laughs> read, he doesn't want to Consider it. <laughs> he wants to go to Toronto or to New York. Yeah. He's yeah. got the connection with John Tortorella. Right, yeah. I was in Tampa the year before they won the Cup, and he was a better player than Vincent LeCavalier. Absolutely. He played the point on the mm -hmm. power play, did everything they asked. He's a great player. Um, Toronto's going to throw eight, nine million dollars at him because they can. Um, John has a great connection with him in New York. Yes, but if you read, like, if you read Rich Hammond, you know they're going to make a bid because Rich is talking to Dean and he's saying, "Yeah, we're going to go after him," which I didn't think would happen. But you know, my sources say that there's two teams involved. The Kings can throw a lot of money at him. I think he'd be a fabulous fit here. I think he'd like playing with his team and these players. I just they're a third, you know, the third horse in a two-team race. Where Dennis, fit. he has to say that. What, what else can he say? He yeah. can't say we're not going to go after him. He doesn't well, fit into our system. There's no logical reason why they wouldn't want him, right? He has go to with say the players it. we have. We have to, our, he, like he said last year, our guys have to be better, right? Another Kopitar healthy all year. So, I, so all I, of I those guys that. can be better, but yeah. they still need to add players. So I think he has to say that. I don't think it's free agency though. I think it, as a trade's got to come down the pike. Yeah. I think they really that's how it's going to happen. That's trade. how it's going but to happen. Right? I think if they got Richards, I think where it fits it is that it would give Braden Shen another year to develop, mm -hmm. right? Because if you put him in the A next year, because um, you know he's done well and you know, he's dominated the junior level, you put him in the A, he develops at center. You could put Brad in the middle on the number two pivot, move Stoll down to three, and then if Braden's the real deal next year. You move Brad to the left wing, and then you got your number one left wing. So I think it would be a fabulous acquisition yeah. for him. I just, I, I just don't get the sense he's going to come here. But so if there's an absolute fit here. He's good. He's a good player. A no player. problem with attitude. Yeah. Um, a winning player. Won a cup. Um, all the right things you want to have him come here. But you know, I just think that the ties and the money in, in other cities are going to be just too yeah. powerful yeah. for him to come in. Yeah. Uh -huh. So then, agree. Will will Dean Lombardi uh, make some kind of trade to address this, or are we going to ice Dustin Penner and Ryan Smith as the top he has two to. left wings? He has it. This I still is. love Zach Parise. So do I. And I still hear that there's that. Good that luck. might happen. Never so happened. Never happened. No. So. Here, here's the deal. Okay. I think I, I thought they would make. I thought they had to make a trade this summer. And I was thinking Jeff Carter, Bernier, a defenseman, a prospect, picks. And you start looking at the cap situation the next year. And I'm thinking they're going to stay with what they have. They might make one of those smaller, middle-level deals. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, maybe a TJ Oshie they would look at or somebody like that. But when you look at the cap situation year after next, Smith and Penner and Stoll come off. And that's Mitchell. $15 million. And Mitchell's. And if Mitchell, if they don't resign Mitchell, that's $18 million off the cap in two years. Right? They're going to have to re-up Drew. They're going to have to re-up Simmons. Um, I'm not so sure. I, I was dead on, like, in you know, January, we'd sit at the press box and like, they need a top six guy. They need a top left wing. They need a center. They need something. I, I, I'm not so sure that Dean doesn't stand pat. At this you know point. what, though? They, it, it's, a, it's a weird statement to make, but they almost have too many prospects. Yes. When, you, when you look at what's going on in Manchester and when you look at what's coming out of juniors, yeah. it's almost like they have to make a trade because they have too many guys. There just aren't enough boxes. The problem, the problem is they're not going to pack some, enough players. And prospects to bring in the top, the top three forward. That part is true. The other part issue is, is that he overvalues his prospects yes. and holds on to them too long. Yep. You're going to trade Boyd off. He did it last year. Right? You package these guys before. Like Tubert, they got away with a little murder there because you know we knew he was a number five defenseman, right? I mean, that's what he was. That was his destiny. Well, and Oscar yeah. Moeller. Oscar <laughs> Moeller, it was a year too late. 
They could have gotten some. Yeah, I, I don't think they could have gotten some. He's a throw in now. Yeah. Yeah. He's a throw in. Yeah. He's yeah. a throw in. Yeah. Oscar yeah. Muller's going back to Europe, though, so he, I, don't, I just don't. But, but there was value there. Yeah. There was, and that's a, one of those weird things is even, you know, regardless of what how they valued him, it was painfully obvious that they weren't going to play him. Right. So regardless of how you valued him, what's the point? You're, you're not moving him, and you're not playing him. It's the worst of all it's, worlds. It's your, in the business world, it's yeah. just letting an asset yeah. just die on the market. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, the one prospect they traded is Tuber. That's, they, they've not traded any other prospect. They talk about how deep the prospects are and stuff like that. And, you know, we got to get to a point where we talk about goaltending and, you know, Jonathan Bernier. And, I think that's. You know, I, I think he's the key asset of all. I mean, I think he's proved himself in the regular season to some respect. In the World Championships now, he's played really well. I, you got to leverage that. I know we got your team needs two goaltenders. Blah blah blah. You can find a backup goaltender. Well, they've got another. They've got another goaltender. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They've got a bunch. And they've got, got two. Yeah. They've got so, connections so, with Philadelphia, so I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> with everything that goes on with Philly that something happens with Philly. And I don't know exactly who it's going to be, but Philly's got three goaltenders, and not one of them can stop the puck. Right. So right. if you're going to make a trade for somebody and you've got a guy right. like Bernier in the net, now's the time to do it and where Phil's you make also, something Phil's, happen. Philly's also got some cap issues with some guys right. coming they available. Right, they, 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 they need to get rid of salary. They need to get rid of salary. They need some yeah. help Claude Giroux so. or Carter. Right. Well, the problem is that their, their, con their paper really isn't tradable. There's a lot of no trade clauses there. Chris Pronger's deal kills them. Yes. It absolutely yeah. destroys them. The guy can't. Well, the Carter back deal, so too. The Carter deal is the same thing. You've got 10 years on that deal. There's no way Dean Lombardi takes a 10 year deal. There's no way. He's not. He's a four year deal type of guy. Right. The person that's probably going to be available on that team is probably going to be Hartnell. He has a no trade. But with he's the thing that's top six, though. God, I'm, I'm not saying he is. I'm saying that's who's available. Yeah. Though. Yeah. That's yeah. where the problem is with yeah. Bernie because, I mean, I'm sh there are problems in the Philly locker room. I don't think I'm really breaking it right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay? And, um, you know, there, there are a couple guys that might need to go away, and Hartnell's in the middle of all that. Mm -hmm. And he has a much, much easier yeah. contract to move than Carter. And so that doesn't fix the Kings' problem. Yeah, it doesn't. That's, does, and does that's the problem with Philly. He's he's unrestricted out of Philadelphia. Does yeah. he bring he, something top six to the game? Yeah, another twenty goal scorer. Yeah. You get, yeah. Stop with the twenty goal scorers. Yeah. Yeah. Just Claude, Claude, Claude Drew would be would cool. be he's not a great pick pickup. Like, that's the question. Right, exactly. Right. 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 But that's the guy they would want to get. I think they got to go back. Oh right. Oh in a heart. Who else do you want? Do you want Muller? Yeah. We'll throw in Muller. I think Bernier solves any problems in Philadelphia though. They have young goaltenders and they're just bringing another package. They're bringing another young unproven goaltender. Talk about overvalued. He's going to be better than the, those could other be. guys. But could they're be. talking but about Philadelphia. That's not what I want. I want a proven goal. Philly's player. talking about Vokun or Briscoff. They got the four. They're going to have to pay for the yeah. other They have three point five committed in net right now, yeah. and that's going to go to seven. Now the guy, I think they got to go and look at one more time and make another end run. And is Columbus lost twenty five million dollars last year with you know with Nash. They're going to have to right. cut the with, So so they're yep. not drawing. I mean, give them give them the list of you know. Here's ten guys. Take four. <laughs> Give us right there. How about Bernier, Johnson, Stall, and Simmons? Well, I'm not sure. You can I have a trade. I take that. I take that. that. I take that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. I'm totally sure. Right. Absolutely. Because, because eventually yeah. Columbus is going to have to decide: are we, gonna, are we going to become the new Atlanta or Phoenix and be rumored about where we're going next? I just think you make a, a really strong play for a guy like that. Um, the problem is, and we talked about this last year: Dean Lombardi, his great trade is Jason Ward for a third round pick. Right. It's not four guys for one. He doesn't do that. But historically, in any sport, when you trade for the superstar, the, the team that trades the superstar never gets the value no. back. Mm -hmm. So make the Make the deal already. Make it one time. Find you know that one superstar who you can who's gonna willing to be moved and find and make the deal. Let's see what But happens. take on a contract that makes sense also. You can't take on you can't take on a Coble Chuck or a right. Carter like that because then you're just hamstringing yourself. Yeah. Well, I got a question for you because as far as free agents go next year, not this year, mm -hmm. and you wanna save your money and you wanna make a yeah. big push or whatever, um, the name that always gets thrown around for a pure sniper that, you know, can't do anything except score goals, which might not be a horrible thing for the Kings right at this mm -hmm. point, is Semin. Semin's uh, going to be out there. And not, I'm not saying I like Semin. Uh, I, I, I understand. I'm not, I'm not saying I want him. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm not. Yeah. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> Let me make that clear because I don't. But mm -hmm. he's a 40-goal guy. He, the Kings don't have... 30 goal guys. Right. So, you know. I agree with the type of player because there's a, that type of player's batter is hanging from the rafters. He's number 20. Yeah. He never played defense. Right. right. He wasn't that fast of a skater. Right. He, character. I mean, that's the other thing we got to talk about is these character two-way players the Kings have. 
There's a plethora of them. Forget it. I want Danny Heatley, who doesn't come back down every shift, and maybe he's not the greatest guy in the room, and, and can't stop the you know, 35 goals. Well, your room should be strong at this point. Your room and that was the argument two years ago. Yeah, it and was. Now, yes. now the room is but strong. To be even you said two years ago. We talked about this last yeah. year. I think we had this exact conversation. Dennis wants 50 yeah. goals, period. Oh, yeah, I, I, I agree okay. with David. Seven. 99 is not coming out of retirement no. anytime soon. I'm saying that, that type of player. player. Well, that's not good. And that's right. Or Seven's also, Seven's also playing with Corey arguably the, the greatest player in the game. So you got to, you know, you put anybody up, you put me up with, with uh, eight Extra and I'll, yeah. and I'll you know, score you 40 goals. So we'd like to see that. Kind of, kind of, yeah. It's basically the same thing. I mean, we don't, we don't have anyone on the Kings. There's nobody on the Kings that's going to set him up for 40 goals. There's no way. If he plays with Kopitar, he's not getting 40. Well, we'll look at who Kopitar right. plays with. If you look at the stats, I was looking at some of the stats with Kopitar, and I put them right next to Jonathan Taves. Okay, and Jonathan Taves would get heart talked earlier in the year. Yep. And you can't tell this. You can't tell the difference in the stats. And I'm talking all of them. The goals, the assists, the Selkie numbers. Talking about, I mean, the face-off percentage. Um, Taves is much better, but I mean, Kopitar. All of his advanced stats look good as far as um, you know on the yeah. defensive side of the puck. He is. If, if people are going to say Jonathan Taves is a superstar, I mean, you got to almost start thinking that Kopitar is in that that league. And I, who does he play with? Kopitar, I mean, right, right. and you saw right. the All Star right. game when he actually plays with somebody of his talent level. Right. What he can do. Right. Kopitar's got exactly. bad skills. Yeah. Right. He's never had a winger with him. Right. Taves Someone plays with Taves really and Sharp. And, yeah. You know, <laughs> right. Patrick Sharp. Right. And right. even with the log jam and right wing, you can make a deal for a right a scoring right winger now because I, I think if you watch it, um, I think that if you drop Justin Williams to a two. And Dustin Brown would be a phenomenal number three yes. right winger. Mm -hmm. You've got, you know, you've got an ability to go out and because we always looked at left wing last year, left wing, left wing, neither score left wing, and right. You know, I would, you know, whoever that right winger was, with Williams and Brown in support of that guy, that's a good, that's a damn good team. Mm -hmm. And you got Kyle Clifford who's emerging. I mean, I don't know how many goals he's going to score in the league, but he's emerging on the left side. Uh, Smith, you're stuck with, but he'll get 25. I mean. I mean, everybody knows kind of that was in the room. He was so banged up last year. I mean, he was he was doing purely on heart. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. there's opportunity, and it comes down again to Dustin Penner. What's the scale going to say in the training camp? Is it going to say 245 or 225? And you know, if it's 225, and he's on a contract year, it's a contract year. Yeah. Maybe 225. So and he's married now. And he's got a house here, so he's got some responsibilities. Um, I, I think that's going to be the you know, Copa set, Like you said, John, it's going to be leveraged on. I think Dustin Penner. Except I'm not sure if Penner's the right fit for Kopitar's game. I, I agree. Just, I, I think Penner needs a setup guy like he had in Edmonton. He needs somebody to feed him the puck in the high slot areas, and he didn't have that here. That's why I kind of gave him a little bit of a pass in his Kings tenure this past season because, to me, it didn't seem like he, had the, he wasn't the same player, and part of it is because, as you guys know, Certain guys need certain type of individuals playing with them that can take advantage of their skill set. And I don't think Dustin Penner had that in any of the games he played this year. And I, I think if Brayden Shen is on this team next year, Dennis doesn't think he needs another year, I think he's ready to play now. And I think Shen is the pass-first guy who, if you put him with Penner, you could see the Penner that we saw at Edmonton the first half of the year, the guy that we saw in Anaheim when, he was, when they won the Stanley Cup. That, to me, is who Dustin Penner needs, and I, I, I just don't think that he and Kopitar are fit. Well, I agree. well you know, Kopitar is a pass-first guy, too, and Penner didn't do a whole lot. Pro Penner's problem was attitude and fitness. That's it. All right, Kings fans, so that concludes uh, this installment of the postseason roundtable. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, stay tuned for more. I'm Keith Kornelik. And I'm Chris Kalziewski. And thank you for watching Overtime. Bye, Kingscast!